character, resolve, a determination to keep a season alive. So I've given up all hope on us making finals in 2023 after that loss to Richmond. I didn't really have any hopes that we'd make finals before that match, but now there's just there's no hope. We are we're not making finals. It's it's officially done. So I'm going to be looking on to our 2023 trade period and what our future looks like in this video. And uh, yeah, we'll get straight into it. All right, so starting things off, if you couldn't tell by the title and the thumbnail, we're going to be talking about Tom Barras, who is the most recent. And I personally find him the most interesting trade rumor going around, circling around Sydney right now. So in the last few days, there have been quite a few rumours going around that Tom Boras is going to leave West Coast for Sydney, despite at the end of the year there still being three years left to run on his long-term contract at West Coast. Now when Boras signed that contract extension in the December of 2021, he was probably expecting West Coast to at least be a competitive outfit for the remainder of his career. However, since that contract extension was signed, he has played in a total of 31 games and recorded three wins, which is why the rumours have been starting to circulate since Barras is a brilliant player and he is defending in one of the worst sides of all time. So how likely is this to actually happen? Well, as a Sydney fan, I'm certainly hoping it happens because we are in desperate need of key defenders right now. Our key defensive stocks have been... Uh, They've been exposed a little bit this year with through injuries, and Tom Barras is, I think, one of the best defenders in the league, one of, definitely one of the best key defenders in the league, that's for sure. For the reasons I mentioned earlier about Barras playing for a club that has turned into an absolute basket case over the last couple of years, I do think that this trade certainly is a possibility. It isn't an unprecedented thing for players to break long-term contracts. We saw Grundy last year go to Melbourne despite not even being halfway through his contract, albeit the circumstances there were a little bit different with Collingwood essentially needing to offload him for salary cap reasons. There's also the case of Rory Lobb most recently who left Fremantle despite having a year to run on his contract. The ball is, however, entirely in West Coast court, and we'll have to offer up something pretty juicy in return for Barras. It's likely looking like we're going to have pick around 5 to, to 8 in this year's draft, which could be pushed back a couple of picks with a couple of band 1 compensation picks for free agents happening this year, most likely. Now, personally, I think that a pick 6 or a pick 10 or pick whatever it is would be enough to get a trade deal done here. Uh, under normal circumstances, I'd say a pick around 15 would be enough to get a trade done here. Um, that's assuming that he was uh, at the end of his contract uncontracted. Um, in this case, obviously, he is contracted, so I'd say, and for a number of years too, so I'd say he'd be worth a little bit more than that, and I th would think that West Coast would drive a bit of a harder bargain. So I think pick six would be fair. However, there are a couple of other players that Sydney are chasing this season. Um, they're obviously Harry Himmelberg and Tom DeConing. They're a couple of big names that have um, been linked to Sydney in this year's trade period. And I'll, I'll go into more detail about them later. However, we are going to obviously have to use some of our other picks uh, in the draft to make those trades happen. How are we going to get enough draft picks to get all three of these players? I'm not too sure. We have 16 out-of-contract players at the end of the year. Some of them have a bit of trade value, but not an awful lot. So I think that it's most likely that we won't be able to trade to get all three of these players. And then there's a possibility that some of these players may not even select us as a trade destination. They may request uh, trades to other clubs that are circling around them because of course Sydney aren't the only club circling around all of these players. Okay editor's note here something that slipped my mind is that Harry Himmelberg is a restricted free agent which means that potentially whichever club he chooses may not actually have to give up anything in return for him although GWS still can match a bid and force a trade so yeah just thought I'd quickly mention that since that 
I forgot about that when recording this video. Barash seems to be the closest to a one-horse race out of all three of these players, although it does seem from all reports that I've read that we've put uh, the most money and the biggest contracts into trying to lure over the other two players. However, it's still very much uh, not guaranteed. Now, one last thing I'd like to go over about Barras before I talk about De Koning and Himmelberg separately was a point brought up by True Footy in his most recent Trade Rumours video, and it is that because West Coast are a rebuilding club, they may look to um, pay for some of Barras's contract if he does go to Sydney, just uh, like maybe a fifth or a quarter of the salary, uh, and that is in order to get Sydney to pay up a bit more in terms of draft picks. So they'll pay a little bit of the salary and in return Sydney will offer up a, a little bit more in return. So I see this as a possibility and that's the main reason why I really want Barras because we won't have to pay for his contract entirely. It'll be cheaper than getting Himmelberg, who it looks like we're going to, if we do get Himmelberg, we're going to have to pay up big for him. So yeah, that was just one last thing I wanted to point out about the Barras trade. But anyway, we'll now talk about the other two people I mentioned. Alright, that's enough about Barras. Let's talk about Tom De Koning. He is a young up-and-coming ruckman from Carlton who by all reports is going to leave Carlton at the end of the year. Sydney, as well as a couple of other clubs like St Kilda and Geelong and Essendon, are, well, they're, they're trying to get him. Um, Sydney have offered, apparently, according to this article, which I'll put on screen now, have offered him an eight-year deal uh, on very big money. So, yeah, I, I, mean, I, I definitely do think he is um, should be our biggest target. He... We absolutely need more ruck depth, or just, we just need a ruckman, a good ruckman. Tom Hickey, he's uh, he's getting on, he's in the twilights of his career, and he's out of contract at the end of the year. Peter Laddams is, he's not that good, and Lachlan McAndrew, he's very young, and he's only played a couple of games, so our ruck stocks really aren't the best. Tom De Koning, um, look, we, we absolutely need to get this guy, in my opinion. He is just... He is a star in the making. He has all. The, he has every bit of potential to become the best ruckman in the game, and yeah, I think we absolutely need to target him. And of course, the other player who seems to be heavily on our radars is Harry Himmelberg, the swing man from GWS, can be played as a key back or a key forward. Um, I think that, to be honest, if if we get if we get a Tom Barras deal done then I actually don't even think we should go after Himmelberg. I, I think Barras is a better key defender than Himmelberg, which is where we're going to play Himmelberg as a key defender. We've got a Marty um, McDonald up forward, potentially McLean if we sign him on, which I think he is in talks to be signed on. So I don't think we're going to really need him up forward. We're going to definitely need him down back, though. And I think Barras, he'll be, he'll be cheaper um, in terms of salary because... Well, like I said, West Coast may pay a portion of his salary, and he's just a better defender. Like he is, he's he was a top three key defender in 2022. He was a critical part of their flag success. He was great in that 2018 Grand Final. So I think that if we get Barras, then don't bother with Himmelberg because it'd just be it'd just be too expensive. We're gonna have to pay um, Tom De Koning a bucket load of money, and if like we just can't afford to overpay because I think that if we pay Himmelberg eight hundred nine hundred thousand like I've been hearing, then that's overpaying him. He's not worth that much, I, and he's not going to be worth that much in the future. So yeah, I I honestly I don't rate Himmelberg as highly as these other two players. And I if if we don't get Barras, then yeah, sure go after Himmelberg. But if we do get Barras, then personally I'd be saying if I was in charge, then that's that's good enough. We still have Melican. We still have Tom McCartan, Rampy, although he's in the back end of his career. We can hit the draft and look for key defenders. It's fine. 
but yeah, um, that is that's my take on Himmelberg and De Koning. So, anyways, guys, that is my thoughts on all of the trade rumors surrounding us. In future videos, I may go over some trade rumors surrounding other clubs, but for now, I'm just going to stick to Sydney. If any more developments on other players happen, then I might do a video on them. But um, yeah, as we get closer to the end of the season, we should see a few more um, rumors pop up about player movement. But yeah, if you did enjoy this video, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. And I will see you all in the next one. Bye.